So we want to take what we've learned about a weighted mean and kind of expand on it a little bit. So we're going to learn how to find the mean and the median and mode, which we haven't done recently, but for a discrete frequency distribution, which is this guy right here. Those are discrete values right here. And then these, this, these are frequencies, right? There's 68 tiles in Scrabble that are worth one point. For example, all the A's are worth one point. So we're going to examine the value of the letter tiles in the game Scrabble. And this data set is available if you're interested. Um, it's available on StatCrunch, so we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so let's think about this. We have our point values here. These are obviously our x's, right? And then we have our weights right here, which are frequencies, right there. And then we want to look through, there's 100 tiles altogether. So it's 10 by 10, right? There's 10 rows and 10 columns, if you look at them. There's two that are worth no points at all which are the two blank tiles. So that's two right there. And then I counted the 68 for you, you're welcome. <laughs> and I counted all these other ones. So there's 68 ones, seven twos, eight threes, and so on. Eight points is kind of the hardest to see. It's the J right there. And there's one other one, the X right there. So J and X. So there's two of those. And then the 10 pointers, everybody knows, that's Z and Q, the two hardest letters in the English alphabet. All right, so we have those values. Isn't this great? Now, why, what type of data is this variable point value? And I sometimes ask this a different way. I'll say, you know, why is this a discrete distribution? Because it is, it's discrete. And it's because if you look at the x values, the point values, they have to be whole numbers. You can't score 1.26 numbers in this. You can either score 1 or you can score 8 or you can score 4 or 2, but you can't score a decimal, right? So this is because the x values, which are the points, are whole numbers, no decimals, right? <laughs> I was about to make no decimals one word. That doesn't make any sense. No decimals. I will ask that question frequently in a different way. So it's important to write down for yourself what's happening. So it's, it's the point values are discrete. They're not qualitative because you can do calculations from them. And they're not continuous because there's no decimals possible. So it's discrete. Right? There's a finite number of them. They're countable and so on. All right. Now we're going to find the mean, median, and mode. Lovely. All right. Well, the mode, if we can spot from here, the mode, this is similar to what we were doing in chapter two. It's the modal class. 68 is the highest frequency, so the mode is one. It's right there. One. Now, if we think about the median, there's 100 tiles total. I'm actually just going to kind of do this by hand. Total. So that means that the median is the value that has 50 tiles below it. And then you have the median right here. And then you have 50 tiles above it. Well, it's kind of obvious where it has to be. <laughs> so let's think. If I start at 2 and I go all the way up to 50, I'm in the middle of this group, right? So the 50th one's in here somewhere. And then there's 50 up here, right? So I've cut this particular group up into a group of about 48 and 20 more. So 20 of those ones go into the top half, 20 or 48 of those ones go into the bottom half, but either way the median's in there, right? So the median has to be 1 also, if you can visualize that, <laughs> right? So the median is 1, the mode is 1. Great, fabulous, okay? So then what about the mean? Well, let's do the mean by hand for extra practice. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new row out here that's x times the weights or the frequencies. I'll just write w because we're used to writing w. I almost wrote f for frequency. Either way. All right, so 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. 1 times 68 is 68. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 8 is 24. 4 times 10 is 40. 5 times 1 is 5, 6 times 0 is 0, 7 times 0 is 0, 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 0 is 0, 
10 times 2 is 20. So then I want to add up. Well, I know these add to 100. I mean, I've actually just said it. You can see it here, 10 by 10, but you can actually prove it. All right, so let's go to Desmos. Now let's prove these things. So first of all, 2 plus 68 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 plus 2 is indeed 100. Lovely. And then let me get these numbers. 0 plus 68 plus 14 plus 24. By the way, you don't actually have to add in the zeros. I'm just doing it for fun. <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything in particular. So we get 187 and we get 100. Right, so if I go back here, the total here is 187, the total here is 100. So that means that the mean will be 187 divided by 100, which is 1.87. Oh, these all have units, that's points. This is a game, so um, points would be your unit. Oops, sorry about the camera showing. There we go. All right, so it's points, points, points. Those are the units. Okay, so now let me prove it to you a couple different ways. Let me get this data set up in StatCrunch. And actually, I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to go to StatCrunch. I'm going to go to Data Sets. I'm going to type Scrabble. And sure enough, there's my data set with Scrabble. And then let me see if I... Oh, I did do it this way. Interesting. Okay. So let me show you how this works. So if I was going to do this by calculator, I would do stat, or by, sorry, stat crunch. Um, technology is what I meant. Stat, summary stat, grouped binned, right there. And I can say the bins, remember the bins are the x's, the counts are the frequencies. So bins are always the x values, counts are always the weights or the frequencies. And you can tell it you want the mean, the median, and the mode, which is down at the very bottom. I'm just holding the control click button. So I kind of scroll around, and then when I see one I want, I hold down the control button and click. And then I lift up on the key, and then I go scroll some more, and then control click. And there you have it. Same values we came up with. Nice. Okay, now the next question is asking, what about the shape of this distribution? Well, Let's look at the graph. I mean, I can kind of tell what it is from here, but let's look at a graph so you can see it. And because of the way this is, this is written as a summary right now, so we're actually going to have to do a bar plot with summary, right? Because this isn't a list of data. It's summarized into a table. So when you do that, it's bar plot with summary. The categories are the point values. The counts are the number of tiles. And I'm going to put them in worksheet order. So the order they come in in this worksheet behind here. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the order it's going to go in. And I'm going to click Compute. That's the graph. It's a bar chart. Technically, it should be a histogram because this is quantitative data. But to do that, I would have to have the data listed out here, which I can do. Give me one second. They are actually added in the raw data, just so we all can look at it, which means we don't have to have a bar chart anymore. We can actually do a histogram now. Because remember, histograms are only allowed for raw data. There's no options for with summary. They haven't built that into StatCrunch yet. So if I say points, frequency, this should work. There we go. That's a histogram. But you can also see what I mean. If we had two zeros, then we have a whole bunch of ones. You can see like, oh, by the time I get to the 50th row, that's halfway, and they're still at one, right? One is the median because it's the halfway spot between the 50th and the 51st, and then it just keeps being ones for a while, and then it's all these other numbers. So that's what I was meaning by that. So I like this. I've actually saved this. So now when you guys upload the Scrabble um, on StatCrunch, or when you should, I should say, when you click on this data set, it will have that. Okay, so we can see this graph, it's skewed right, which we know already because the mean is bigger than the median, significantly bigger. I mean, it's not just a little bit bigger. In a game like this, that's a lot of points, right, 0.87. So we are going to say that right here. So it's skewed right for, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to turn off the camera a bit. All right, so it's skewed right for a couple reasons. One, we can actually see a graph of the thing. 
you can also just look at the table. You can see, hey, biggest peak will be right here, and then it tails off to the right, right? So it's skewed right. Now, for the explanation, there's a few explanations that are valid. So you could say the mean is significantly larger than the median. Okay? You could say um, the frequencies Uh, taper off, right? So they get, they start off high and then they get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Taper off for the high x values. In other words, if you look at a graph, right? So that's kind of the table. That's the mean median business. Sorry, I don't like that my median for one is in there. And then there's the, here, I'll just make it smaller. Um, the graph. So you can look at a graph of the thing, which, you know, we don't always have graphs available to us, but if we did, it would be, you know, we've got a little bar for there, a really tall bar for here, and then a bar, a bar, a bar, and then little bitty bar, and then, right, it looks like this, right? It's skewed right, right? Look at the tail. I just, I'll say, the tail is to the right. It's only valid if you draw the graph. You can't say the tail is in the right or to the right on the graph <laughs> unless you have a graph to look at. So you want to draw a sketch of the graph if you're going to do it that way. So we actually used right the mean versus median logic bit. We're using the table bit and then we're using the graph. And the table and the graph, I mean, this is a visual representation of what we were talking about up here that we have a really tall bar and then it kind of tapers off, right? And this is just a graphical representation of that. Now, you're playing Scrabble with a friend and they ask you, you know, what's the average point tile or point value for a tile? What would you answer them? And the answer is you could say a couple things, right? That's what makes this a statistics course and not, you know, an algebra class where there's only one right answer all the time. So the answer is one, but your reasoning for it could be different. So you could say one um, because and then there's two valid answers for why that is. So it's definitely one though, one point I should say. It's because one is the median, right? So you could say um, point values are skewed right and so the median is the best measure of average or center as it's resistant, right? It resists that skew. We learned that back in section 3.1, believe it or not. I mean, it was a while ago, but we learned that, that the median is resistant. And so if you have skewed data, which this is, you would use the median because the median resists that skewing. We actually have it in a table back in section 3.1. There's different potential graphs and we said, if it's skewed right, this is back in section 3.1, you're better off with the median. The median is your better measure of average or center. Okay, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it, I mean, is just look at the graph. Let's go back. Let's look at that stat crunch graph because that's more accurate than mine. I mean, look at it. There is way more on that one bar than there is on anything else. That one bar is so tall, of course it's the most common. So of course that's the best measure of like what a point tile is. An average tile is worth one point because look at them, so many of them are one point. Oh, by the way, if you do this, if you click on it and make it pink, you've selected them. To unselect it in the bottom left corner, there's a clear. You can just click clear and nothing is pink anymore just in case that ever happens to you. I've had some students turn things pink and then they don't know how to unturn it pink. <laughs> so that's what to do. Okay, so, or you could say, because one was by far, I mean, it wasn't even close, by far the most frequent. So more tiles 
by far are one point than anything else. This is a mode argument. So up here, we're basically arguing it's the median. This is arguing for the mode. And both of them are OK in this case. What's not OK is 1.87. I like the mean. It's lovely. It was fun to find. But it's not an acceptable value for saying it's the average. Because, I mean, it's so many of the tiles are one point. If you look at that graph, 1.87 is to the right. It's not valid. Point tiles aren't really 1.87. The data is skewed, and so it's not a valid measure of center. So do um, 1.87 is not a good measure. This was the mean, for the record. And it was points, sorry. Is not a good measure of center because the data are skewed. We learned that in section 3.1. When your data are skewed, you don't generally want to use the mean if you can avoid it. So that's the one that you should not say. So I would give correct points, if I was grading this, for either one because of this or one point, I keep forgetting the, the unit, because of this. Both of those are valid. What is not valid and would not get any points at all is to say 1.87 because it's the mean. 1.87 because it's the average. That's not right. These are all averages. It's just a question of which is the best one to use in this case. In this case, it would be 1 for either of these reasons.